Hi, I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to September's Family Day at Home. This month, we're talking all about wonderful watercolor paint. This month's theme is inspired by our current special exhibition, Alice Smith, a Charleston Renaissance artist. Alice Ravenel Hugie Smith was born in South Carolina in 1876. She would go on to paint beautiful watercolor paintings inspired by the South Carolina low country landscape and early 20th century culture. Let's explore her favorite medium together. This activity is watercolor texture sampler. You're gonna to need to gather a few supplies from your family day at home kit. You're going to need your small cups of watercolor paint. You should have blue, red, and yellow. You'll be able to mix any colors that you want to use from just those three colors. You're also gonna need your small cup of salt, your small bag of rice, a white crayon, a small piece of plastic wrap, and the small paintbrush included in your kit. You can find all of those supplies in your family day at home kit. You're also going to need to gather a few things from around the house. Some of these are necessary for this activity, but some of them are optional, so you can gather what you need. You're definitely going to need a little bit of water. I just have a small measuring cup of water here. Some supplies that you may want to find but aren't absolutely necessary are a pencil, a paintbrush if you have one. A larger paintbrush than just this very small one that we gave you could be handy in this activity, but it's not absolutely necessary. If you'd like to mix your paints, you're going to need a plate or a flat surface on which to do that. I'm just using a paper plate. You could use a regular plate that you eat off of. Watercolor paint washes off really easily. You're also going to need um, something round to trace. I have this small water bottle and I'm going to be using it to just trace a nice circle with. You don't have to trace something. You could just draw a circle on your own, but if you want a, a close to perfect circle, then it's handy to have something to trace. And some paper towels. Let's get started. So the first step is going to be to create four different areas on your paper. I'm going to use four circles. You do not have to use circles. You could just draw a straight line dividing your paper in half and another straight line dividing your paper um, in half horizontally, which would give you four areas. But I would like to work with circles. Each of these circles is going to be filled with a different watercolor texture technique. So this is really just a practice artwork that we can use to understand how to create these textures. And then we can go on to use those textures in other works of art. So my first step is going to be to trace the circle on my water bottle just on my paper. So I'm going to trace around the outside of my water bottle four times. This may not make a perfect circle, and if it doesn't, that's totally okay. You can also experiment with, the different, with different supplies that you find around your house that might make a better circle. This is just what I had handy. So I've created four circles on my paper. None of them are perfect and that's okay because this is really about experimenting with texture. I can clean up those circles a little bit just with an eraser from my pencil. But now I'm ready to go. So now that we have four different circles, we're ready to start experimenting with texture. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to prepare my paint is add a little bit of water to each of these paint colors. This paint is concentrated liquid watercolor paint. It doesn't have any water added to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to dilute it a little bit and to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I just filled my cup maybe about halfway with water. And I'm just gonna kind of stir that with my brush in just a moment. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to use the brush that came in your kit. And I'm gonna just start with one of the colors. You don't have to use 
all of the colors. You don't have to use, you can use just one of the colors. You can see how bright and concentrated this paint is. And this is after I added the water. You can use one solid color in your circle, but you could also use multiple colors. You don't really have to worry about staying in the lines necessarily. I'm gonna use my leftover water for rinsing my brush. I think I wanna use two colors of paint here just to see what happens if I mix. This is another good place to experiment with how these paint colors mix together. So I just went ahead and filled my entire circle with paint. I'm gonna blend that area where those two colors mixed a little better. And the first one of our texture effects we're going to use is salt. So I'm just gonna take some salt and sprinkle it right on that circle. I wanna keep the salt right in the circle. I'm not trying to um, move it to a different area or in the, into any of the other circles. So we're gonna let that area dry and we'll see what effects that salt gives us. But while we wait, we're going to move on to one of our other circles. So same thing, we're gonna go ahead and paint some watercolor paint in that area, in that circle area that we made. I'm gonna add two colors again, just to see how these colors mix. Okay. And this time, I'm gonna take that plastic wrap that we had and I'm gonna kind of smush it up a little bit and I'm gonna just set it on the paint. I just wanna kind of mash it down on the paint a little. I'm just gonna sort of let it dry there. I'm gonna leave that on there while the paint dries and we'll see what kind of effects that plastic wrap gives us. Let's move on to our next circle. Wash my brush really well. So I've shown you several circles using the small brush that this comes with, that your kit comes with. But if you have another paint brush, kind of show you how you can use that one. Same thing really. So I'm just gonna spread the paint around the circle. This time I think I'm gonna use blue with yellow. Again, another good, another good time to experiment with how these colors mix. This is sort of a color mixing experiment for me as well. Okay, rinse my brush. I want to add a little more yellow here. Okay, and now we're going to see what happens if we add a little bit of rice to our watercolor. So I'm just going to get a few grains of this rice in the small bag. I'm just gonna sprinkle it onto that wet watercolor. I'm not going to move it around or paint on top of it. I'm just gonna set that to the side. And last but not least, I wanna show you how you could mix some colors ahead of time before you paint on and show you our last texture effect as well. Okay, so I'm gonna use my white crayon this time, and I'm just going to draw with my white crayon on my white paper. And I'm gonna see, it's hard to see when I first draw, but let's see what happens if we paint over the top. Now, I think I wanna use orange paint, but I don't have orange as one of the colors that I was given. But I do know that I can mix a little bit of red paint with a little bit of yellow paint to get orange. So I'm just gonna drip some of that in, mix those colors together. And now I have a beautiful orange color right on my paper plate. I'm gonna take that orange, I'm gonna paint it right on to the circle. And you'll notice that everywhere that I drew with the crayon, the paint will not stick. The paint is resisted, which creates a really interesting effect. 
Now, to, to fully get the effects of this painting of our textural effects, we're gonna have to let all of this dry. And then we'll come back in a couple of hours, pull off the rice, the salt, and the plastic wrap, and see the beautiful results that we have achieved with these watercolor techniques. I hope that this watercolor sampler will inspire you to make other watercolor works that use these textural effects. Think about how you could use salt in your watercolor painting or rice or plastic wrap or a crayon to create a wax resist. What would happen if you used a colorful crayon instead of just a white crayon? There's so many different things to explore with watercolor paint. We hope that you take time to explore them all.